Welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron, live interactive Bible study. We're a leader led by Pastor Douglas Banks out of Columbia, Maryland, and our facilitator is Minister Brenda Robb from Northern California. We're currently studying the book of Revelation. Come on in, have a seat, and study with us. We come before you this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart, Father. We want to thank you for the blessing of waking up one more day to see another new day that you have created. Thank you, Father, for your tender mercies upon our life. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to come and to learn more of your word. Your word says to study, to show ourselves approved, Lord, and um, uh, unto you, to show ourselves approved unto you. May this, may we be able to follow your word, Father, and study to show ourselves approved unto you. We thank you, Lord, for the facilitator, um, her dedication, Father, that she that she has been uh, your worker for so many uh, ways, Father. We thank you for her uh, example, Father. And we thank you for the pastor, Lord, that comes on. He studies, Lord, He and he uh, is in tune with you. Your Holy Spirit guides him in order to guide us that you're, that we uh, that uh, he can expound on your word and open it up more for us let us ha- continue to have an ear to hear and a heart to be receptive that we may live your word father and we may share your word we thank you father for this opportunity for not all people's eyes are opened unto you and your word and your way thank you lord let us continue, Father, to uh, be students of your word and your way. We love and appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Gloria. Thank you for leading us to the throne of grace. I want to join in with that prayer that we uh, both live and share who we are in Christ Jesus and most of all who Jesus Christ himself is. Uh, to unbelievers. Uh, So to live and to share is what we do as uh, people who are of the kingdom of God, called by God, uh, anointed by the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And so uh, I want to thank God for that prayer. I want to thank God for our our facilitator who did a great job on yesterday. I I listened in on the class. It was a great class, lively uh, people were involved and in, uh, asking questions and giving comments. It was <clears throat> a very, very good uh, facilitation of that class on yesterday. Um, just, uh, I think something came up. I think it was Dorothy. I'm not sure in reference to uh, God answering the prayers of unbelievers. He doesn't really do that. He's not in tune to the prayer of unbelievers except for the prayer of salvation, that they may come unto God. Uh, but he is very much in, in tune with the prayers of believers for the unbelievers. So I believe Reverend Harris uh, clarified that, 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 you know, many people could say, my mother prayed for me uh, when I wasn't even interested in the Lord. But we can be covered by the prayers of believers, even if we're unbelievers, that will, as my, my sweetheart mentioned, um, that we can plant and water a seed by praying for them, uh, that they may come to know Jesus because they've seen what God has done in answering our prayer. Now, <clears throat> when God answers our prayer for an unbeliever, you have to know that it's from the perspective of God, not from our perspective, so that if answering our prayer to heal them will bring them closer to the Lord then. God may very well do that, but if they're staying sick, will bring them closer to God, then God will do that. If God, uh, if giving them another disease or bringing them in a different place, whatever will bring them closer to God. Remember, it's from God's perspective, not our perspective. And so we pray, and then we leave it in the hands of God. Um. Okay, uh, another thing I was glad to hear on yesterday is the uh, the rapture. 
be clear, I just want to amen that this morning, that uh, as we went through the book of Revelation, we came to chapter 4. Uh, remember, chapter 3 was all about the churches. 1 through 3 was all about the churches, this church, that church, this church, that church, all about the seven churches until that came to completion. And then we got to chapter 4, and the Bible says, after these things, I looked. This is John. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Now, <clears throat> most theologians, most scholars believe that John's entrance into heaven uh, coincides with the rapture. John's entrance into heaven coincides with our entrance into heaven, and he sort of represents us. And he's standing there saying um, uh, immediately he was in the spirit, uh, he saw the throne, and he saw God. Uh, And so John is sort of representing the time period, we believe, this time period is that we left, we're gone. And then we see in chapter 5 where Jesus is the one who can open the seals. And he opens the seals, uh, and as he opens the seals, the uh, tribulation begins on earth. So you can uh, be pretty much assured that chapter 4, we're out of here. And and then everything else in chapter 5, as Jesus begins to open the seals, For the wrath of God, that's for those who are still here uh, during the tribulation. Okay. Um, Any any questions about that? All right. Then I think we closed out uh, at chapter 18, so I want to begin there and see if we can get through chapter 18 today. We, we know that in uh, 17, uh, there was the fall of ecclesiastical Babylon, uh, the fall of the church uh, under the Antichrist. The Antichrist and the false prophet uh, are running things on earth, and the false prophet is in charge of the one religion that is accepted on earth, and it is worldwide. The false prophet is in charge. But around this time, when we're going into the great, Uh, tribulation around this time the antichrist turns on the false prophet and i believe it's because he has power and authority and money because he's running one single church you can imagine just one of these churches today making millions of dollars you can imagine he's in charge of all the churches so he has great money and great authority and it's about this time that the antichrist turns on the false prophet and the church falls so it was the fall of ecclesiastical Babylon at this time. And then uh, after that, we come to the fall of the economic Babylon, the fall of the commercial Babylon, which the Antichrist is in, in charge of. And, and he begins to uh, head downhill at this point in chapter 18. And so <clears throat> at chapter 18, I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. And then um, uh, I'd like somebody again to read chapter 9 through 18 when I finish. And so in New King James, it says that after these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily uh, with a loud voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you receive Oh, you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived 
luxuriously in that same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Amen. The word of God. So if somebody will continue with uh, 9 through 18, please. As Reverend Harris, I'll read it. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and they meant for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore, merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object at most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine, and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone, has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who become rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea stood at a distance, 18, and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what is this like, this great city? The word of God. Amen. Amen. So everything is breaking loose. The economic system that has ruled the world uh, um, moved forward by the 666 or the mark or the name of the beast you had to have in order to, to there won't be money. Money will be gone. The, this will be your credit line uh, that you will use, the mark of the beast, but it's all falling apart. It's all falling apart. Uh, one hour, or, or it's equivalent to one week. So it's all falling apart, and uh, people are mourning. All the millionaires and billionaires and people who have been doing great in the stock market, Wall Street, whatever, they've been just knocking it out of the park. Now they're falling apart, worse than the Great Depression of 29. Um, there's no recovery from this. Okay, so will somebody read uh, 19 to the end of the chapter, please? 19 through 24. This is Karen, and I'll read 19. And they cast dust on, on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she made she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and, and of pipers and trumpets shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman whatsoever craft he be. 
shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of the candle sh- it shall shine no more in all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Amen. 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 So it's done. Um, economic Babylon has been shattered. Uh, okay, let's go to uh, page 93, the fall of commercial Babylon. Uh, now John sees this angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth becomes lightened with his glory. The angel calls out with a mighty shout, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. I want to focus on that, is fallen, is fallen. This is emphasizing that uh, not only is religious Babylon gone and economic Babylon gone, judgments are final. <clears throat> These are final judgments upon the earth. It is done. Uh, the, the system that uh, stood against God, that lived uh, against God, is gone. Uh, all the skyscrapers, imagine, try to imagine, all the skyscrapers in Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago, Dallas, all, they all fall, uh, like the World Trade Center in New York. Uh, they just all fall apart. Imagine all the Rocky Mountains uh, to the Himalayas from Alaska to China, all just beginning to disappear, just nothing is, is as it was. It's, it's, everything is just falling apart all at one uh, time. And that's the, the emphasis of falling. It's just done. It's irrevocably damaged, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, um, this is another uh, proleptic message. The angel is announcing a future event as already having happened. Remember, when you live in eternity, you can see past, present, future. You're looking down, and that's where we will be, by the way. We will be with Jesus. And so we will be watching this happen along with the holy angels and all of those who are in heaven, the elders and everyone else, also us, the church, and the martyrs who uh, have been killed and, and are with God. And so we're seeing this happen. We're seeing this, this, this uh, event. And so it is past, present, and future to us who live in this linear segue that we call time and space. But to those who are in eternity, it is all one. It's a proleptic situation. It is all one. Okay, so Babylon's destruction occurs because she is the home of devils and a hideout for every foul spirit, every unclean and hateful bird. Babylon's influence will be worldwide uh, because the kings of the earth commit fornication with her. They are intimate with her. Their lives are intimately involved in evil. And so as a result, the merchants of the earth have become rich, though. It works on a, a, a worldly level. If you want to live on a worldly level, it works. The merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. It's short-sighted, but it allows you to be rich on this plane. So John hears another voice from heaven calling God's people to leave Babylon. God is going to save people even during the Great Tribulation. God will be saving people. Leave Babylon and avoid her plagues, uh, which are the bowls of wrath discussed in chapter 16. This indicates the events in chapter 17 and 18 precede chapters 15 and 16. And so you got to know that some of these chapters are uh, they they are parenthetical they sit there just to let you know what's going on but if you want to do the chronology if you look at just the chronology of how this happened uh chapters 17 and 18 will precede chapters 15 and 16 that's not important the bible is not about being uh scientifically accurate or grammatically correct according to the machinations of mankind the bible just tells the story so that you will know what's going on. Past, present, future are only the limitations 
of our human uh, ability. God is eternal, and he is. Wherever he is, he is. Uh, and so he, the Bible tells us the story, so we will understand the story. That is the point of the Bible, not to be locked into how we would do it. Okay, so unrepentant Babylon will be judged because her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. God's patience has run out. Therefore, God's people are commanded to come out of her uh, because of her sins and her eventual judgment. The judgment will come in one day because strong is the Lord God who judges her. So it will be quick. Uh, this means commercial Babylon will be destroyed quickly. As a result, what will the kings who committed adultery with her and enjoy her luxury do? Well, they will weep. They will weep and they will lament for her. Okay, and they're very sorry uh, because their whole life is destroyed. Uh, do any of you know anything about the Great Depression in uh, 1929? You had Wall Street magnates and millionaires jumping out of windows, committed, shooting themselves in the head. Uh, and this, that's a small representation of what's going to happen at this time period. People who had lived this way luxuriously all their lives and knew no other way to live uh, in, in uh, the Great Depression in America began to commit suicide uh, during that small representation of what this is going uh, to be. Okay, and it's a lesson for us. It's a lesson for us today. Uh, remember and never forget, beloved. Uh, I don't care what the temptation of evil is to you. I know there's temptations of evil to me and to every saint of God uh, because we live in a lost and broken world. Just remember this, that sin fascinates and then it assassinates. Sin will fascinate you, and then it will assassinate you. It is the irony of iniquity. Uh, sin deludes people into thinking that by inappropriate and immoral behavior, we can have joy, and we can have treasures, and everything will be fine uh, forever. Uh, and, and so this is what a sin entices us to believe. The, the dragon can't just come and conquer us because the Holy Spirit is with us. The, the, the serpent can't just come and make us do anything uh, because God will not allow it. And so he lies. He lies, gives illusion uh, so that we believe a lie. And then when we believe a lie, we believe that treasures and joy on earth, even though it's inappropriate and immoral, is fine and there's nothing wrong with it. I came to tell somebody this morning that sin fascinates, but then it's going to assassinate. It will always, always, without a doubt, lead you to gall, lead you to bitterness, lead you to disappointment, and eventually will lead you to death. These uh, Babylonians and this evil world system following the serpent, they served money. That was their God. They served money and they served worldly power. They serve lascivious sexual uh, fornication. They serve things against God, but they look like the rich people. They look like the uh, popular, glamorous, glorious people. People envied them. Uh, people thought that they had everything. Uh, but sin, as it fascinates, will assassinate. These people, as they serve these things of, of uh, the demon, the dragon, they could not at the same time serve God. Uh, they served the false prophet. They could not at the same time serve God. And so even though the false prophet offered world peace and unified uh, a religious system, it was a system uh, based on greed, a system based on worldly pleasure, uh, uh, a, a system uh, that allowed you to be a whore to idols. You can whore to idols. Uh, and have a nice time, and you will be uh, blessed. And this was the message. You can be blessed. Look how rich you can become. Look how luxuriously you can live by serving these idols. Um, 
and it will fascinate, but then it will assassinate. And so right now they are reaching the culmination of their decision, and uh, commercial Babylon is being destroyed. Okay, so uh, someone will take us through the rest of page 94, please, beginning with uh, the world leaders. This is Gloria, and I can read. The world leaders will be terrified and cry out to Babylon, for in one hour is thy judgment come, Revelation 18.10. The merchants of the world will weep because there is no one left to buy their goods. God's judgment on commercial Babylon will destroy the world economic system, Revelation 18.12-14. 12, these merchants will be terrified and weep aloud because although the great city has enormous riches, in one hour is she made desolate. Although the earth mourns, heaven rejoices over the desola- desolation of Babylon. Babylon has slain God's saints, so God slays Babylon. This is a reminder of what promise of God in Hebrews 10, 30 and B. Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. A mighty angel casting a great millstone into the sea symbolizes the utter destruction of Babylon. So complete is her destruction that the sound of music shall be heard no more. Also, craftsmen and tradesmen will not be found anymore. Affluent lifestyles that characterize the first part of a tribulation are ended. The sins of Babylon are many, but her destruction will be the result of what diabolic act specified in Revelation 18.24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Babylon the Great, the final evil world empire and all its splendor is still future. However, the evil system called Babylon is under construction right now. When it reaches its culmination, culmination, excuse me, it will deceive an unbelieving world and lead it to total destruction. Before God wants us to be aware of the fall of ecclesiastical Babylon and the fall of commercial Babylon. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So God wants us to be aware, right? This evil empire is under construction right now. We see, if you have eyes to see, if you know the word of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you are able to see the nations of the world, including our nation, turning more and more away from God and unto uh, the systems of this world. And, And so now we know because we have the seven blessings of those who read and study the book of Revelation, we know how it all ends. We know where it goes into, um, and we know the culmination of this system. So this will be the fall of ecclesiastical or religious. Religious Babylon will fall, the false religion, and commercial or economic Babylon, this economic system of making the rich richer, and the poor, poorer, that will eventually fall also. God will uh, protect his saints. Know that this fall of Babylon is the answer to the prayers of those who are under the throne. Remember the martyrs who are under the throne of God, covered in white garments, saying, God, when will you uh, uh, stand up for us? When will you show uh, that that we were right to follow Jesus, and God says, chill, chill. I got some more people that can be saved, uh, but when the time is right, I will do what I need to do in order to show 
<clears throat> that following God is right and righteous and standing against him in rebellion will lead to destruction. So that is what is happening to this point. Questions, comments, or concerns about where we are. Anything from Revelation 1 to Revelation 18. This is Gloria, Pastor. And I had one question. on um, In Revelation 18, 2, when it talks of the unclean and hateful bird, could you expound on that, what that bird means? Well, the only thing, I don't think it's anything deep. It's, it's uh, when, under the law, under the law, the uh, Israelites were given birds and animals that were unclean, that they were not allowed to eat or have any, any truck with. Uh, then they were given clean animals that they could eat. And, and uh, even to this day, Jews will eat certain things, and, and those things are kosher, and the things that are not kosher, they won't eat because they still think they're under the law. And so the law was given that this is right and this is wrong. Now, we don't know uh, why God chose certain animals as unclean, um, like a vulture. Well, we know some of them look pretty nasty, like vultures and things like that. Uh, but we know that God has said that some of these animals and birds are foul and we are not to eat them. Uh, and, and that's the only thing I could think of for this right here. Now, if you research it, you might find something else. But uh, uh, just off the top of my head, this is what I believe. These are the things, once again, under the law, they are now – in authority in this place. They're with the demons. The demons bring bats. The demons bring bats. Even our own uh, vampire fantasies of demons, they bring with them bats and unclean birds and unclean animals, wolf, wolf men and things like that. It's, it's just emphasizing to me the type of environment uh, that people will be dwelling in. They will be dwelling in a place of demons, uh, a place that is a prison for every foul spirit. So it's sort of the, the, the place of life uh, will be terrible. That's all I see. Thank you. That makes sense. Pastor Thank you Doug. Very much. Yes. Pastor Doug, this is Karen. And as we were reading about the, uh, the destruction of, of Babylon, the ecclesiastical and the commercial, um, I was, uh, co- in my brain, I was comparing it to when God destroyed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, the, the the cries of the people and the stench of the people rose up to him, and he, you know, came to see if it was, in fact, that bad, and it, and it was. And so Sodom and Gomorrah was just one city, and so... I was barely able, you know, to picture that. But at any rate, um, uh, now we're talking about cities, the world, period, being uh, being destroyed. Um, things, you know, uh, uh, disappearing from the earth. He's killing, you know, birds and people. And, and uh, it was just... I like it to him destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, but on a much, much larger scale. Uh, well, I think that's a, of, a great uh, first mention, yeah. I, yeah. I think it is. I think it's very, very, I think that's a great first mention uh, because it's the same situation. Their, their evil has come up before God. Their evil has uh, been full, has been culminated. It is. It is now at it's height, and uh, it's what people have chosen. They have chosen this as their lifestyle, and they're not going to change. This is who they have become. This is what they decided to be. I think Sodom and Gomorrah is a perfect uh, first mention of this because, remember, the, the, the size doesn't matter to God. In fact, even when they talk about Babylon, they talk about it as a city. They talk about as a single city, but even though it's an empire. Uh, so... Uh, 
those ten countries that come under the Antichrist are, are talked about as one empire. So it's all the same to God. If it's a little, what we would consider a little sin or, or a, a great sin, it's the same spirit. It's that demonic spirit that shakes its fist at God, and it will suffer the same ending uh, as a Sodom and Gomorrah for sure. I think that that's perfect. Well, see, 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 uh, see, I would, I take that as, I don't know if you do, but I certainly take that as God-given. To me, that's a revelation. That's a revelation from God. That's a Holy Spirit unction unto your spirit. Your eyes will open to see this and understand it, and you have the audacity to open your mouth and say it. That is uh, what following the Holy Spirit is about to me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. This is Gloria. This, this is, and I need to ditto that because as I was reading it, I was getting that too. But I also thought that um, it seems many times the second um, mention is greater or the second event is greater than the first. Uh, this uh as she was saying, Sodom and Gomorrah was a, a smaller scale, and the end times is going to be much grander. Um, it kind of reminds it's, it's the opposite is Adam, the first Adam, and the second Adam, Jesus. He was much grander, you know. And this is what I got also from from the reading. Amen. Amen. That sounds like revelation to me. Amen. This is Amen. This is Deborah. Mhm. Ditto to that. Both of them. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> um, I thought about a uh, Sodom and Gomorrah too. I wanted to say, um, like, and like, um, this is what I was thinking also. Um, Revelation eighteen twenty, when Babylon has slayed uh, the saints and God slayed Babylon, this is what I was thinking. That this is why you give your 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 problems and your um, fights to to the Lord because He better fights them than you do. That is His vengeance. His vengeance is much better than yours. So, and this is what I was thinking. You know, this is why I'm like. This just give me a reason to just continue giving God everything that I know I can't handle or anything that I know that his is going to come out better when it's in God's hands. And that Amen. would help yeah. me to just give over things to him, you know, to give things that I know I can't deal with by myself. And that that's that's like a revelation to me, um, um, how he um, slayed um, Babylon and, and Sodom and Gomorrah, and you know we need to hand things over to him so he mm-hmm. can fight our battles. Right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that's for sure and for sure. Amen. That is the truth. Pastor Brian. That's the, yes. This is Opal. Could you explain? Ecclesiastical Babylon, one more time for me. Yeah, ecclesiastical is uh, is nothing. It's religious. That's all it is. Uh, uh, ecclesiology is the study of church or the study of theology. So ecclesiastical, in this instance, uh, just means the the theological Babylon, the church of Babylon. It, it is when you talk about somebody's ecclesiology, you're talking about their church tradition. This is how we worship. Like Protestants have an ecclesiology, Catholics have an ecclesiology, Jews have an ecclesiology. We have a custom and a tradition and a system um, in our church. It is how our church is run, how our church is governed. It is what our church believes. It is our theology. And that's that's all ecclesiastics is is the study of church or the study of theology. So during this time period, um, it's going to be like false religion that's being taught in the church. Not only will it be false religion that's taught in the church, it will be the only religion 
that's accepted as religion in the church. The churches will be taken over by the false prophet. He will take over all the churches. It doesn't matter what your used-to-be denomination was. All churches will belong to the Antichrist, and the false prophet will be like the pope. He'll be the pope of all the religions throughout the entire world, but it will only be one religion, and that is the religion that worships the Antichrist. Okay, good, thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay, so oh. since we know we're not anywhere near that, we thank God for the rapture. Mm-hmm. Amen. And we'll be watching this. We'll have uh, uh, box seats. We'll have box seats uh, uh, watching this in the bosom of Jesus Christ, not to say we'll have any great joy in it, um, God will not have any great joy in it, but it will be something that needs to be done uh, for those who rebel against the Almighty and refuse to turn and confess that Jesus the Christ is Lord and God is creator of heaven and earth and the devil will not ascend beyond the head of God. Um, and so the hell that was created for Satan and his angels If you want to follow Satan and his angels, then you will follow him to his final destination, which is hell. And we who follow God will follow Jesus to our final destination, which is heaven. All right, so tomorrow tomorrow we uh, will... Go to lesson 22. We'll start lesson 22 uh, and get into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, In Revelation 19, we'll discuss the second coming of Jesus Christ, the battle of Armageddon. And so uh, Satan's kingdom has been destroyed during the Great Tribulation, um, and we'll find out what follows that, what follows the destruction of those who have willfully chosen to follow Satan willfully chosen to follow the Antichrist, willfully chosen to have their religion steeped in the religion of the false prophet against the mm-hmm. word of God. And so, Lord God, we pray Pat, that... Uh, you, yes. Uh, this is the stage dream. I just wanted to say two things. One, I want to reach out and say thank you, Pastor uh, Minister Brenda, because... Um, I did go away with the thought of thinking it was two seven-year periods, and I started um, questioning at my own heart. So I truly appreciate you making that clarification this morning right off the top. It's, it's very much appreciated. And also, this my little observation, a uh, ditto to everyone that was talking about the, uh, the Sodom, but I also wanted to bring the thought of, when we look at today's stock market and we look back at at 2008 when it took a fall and then people started coming towards Christ and thinking, and yet there was an underlying mentality where for folks of uh, different economic levels, oh, you don't want to do this. This is too dangerous. This isn't going to prosper you. And as we saw in the last four years, this president, all he thought about was the stock market. He didn't care about the economy uh, falling under it. It was just the building up the image of what looked like there was prosperity in the land. And now you're seeing those people starting to fall a little bit. And we're just going right back trying to put that same leadership in place, looping around another four years if if um, the idiots um, have their their way. That's just my observation. Okay, well, that's, that's a political opinion. But one thing we know for sure, that uh, the, the rich have gotten richer and the poor have gotten poorer over the last four years. There's no question about that. And the, the, the concept of a great economy does not affect middle class. It just doesn't. It affects rich people and it affects poor people, but it did not help middle class. When you talk to the average middle class person, 
they haven't gotten any better over the last four years. In fact, they've gotten worse. And so the emphasis uh, hopefully will be on us, the middle class. Most of us are middle class or working class or whatever. We could be poor, but we know we haven't, uh, we haven't advanced. And so it, it, this, hopefully this is a time period when we can. So we, we thank God um, for the opportunity to see what the end will be. We thank you, Lord God, for providing a, a, a word, a written word that allows us uh, to join into the living word, even Jesus Christ, to follow according to your great love, your grace, and your mercy. We pray that you sustain us even right now. We pray for healing in our bodies, healing in our spirit, healing in our minds and in our souls, Lord God, that we might stand brightly as lights on the hill and salt of the earth. Bless us, Lord God, for daring to come into your word and finding out your way that we may operate in your will. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. 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 Amen.